Phillips and Brigadier General Harrison, who join us virtually. Present today, Colonel Brumsey, Colonel Hanfield, Colonel Connor, Colonel Burris, Captain Ward, Chancellor Dixon, Dr. Ward, Dr. Rayner, Mrs. Shaw, and any distinguished members of the Rocks Incorporated. And we welcome anyone in attendance today, viewing virtually or in attendance today. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem and remain standing for the invocation by Cadet Zheng and the Cadet Creed by Cadet Teagle. The words to the Cadet Creed can be found on the back cover of your program. Please bow your heads in the manner of your faith as I pray in mine. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today to thank you for all of your blessings in these soon-to-be non-commissioned officers. That stand before us today. It is with great opportunity that you join these officers in recognizing their accomplishments in coming this far. We know you have shaped them during their time in Elizabeth City State University and pray that you will continue to shape them as officers in our army. Thank you for this opportunity, Father. In your name we pray, amen. The Cadet Creed. I am an Army Cadet. Soon I will take an oath to become an Army officer, commit to defend the values which makes this nation great. Honor is my touchstone. I understand mission first and people always. I am the past, the spirit of those words who made the final sacrifice. I am the present, the scholar and apprentice soldier enhancing my skills in the science of warfare and the art of leadership. But above all, I am the future, the future warrior leader of the United States Army. May God give me compassion and judgment to lead and the gallantry and valor to win. I will do my duty. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. We will now have opening remarks from Major Kendrick, Professor of Military Science, Viking Battalion. Good morning, distinguished guests, family, friends, and cadets. Thank you for joining us today for the 2023 commis Spring Commissioning Ceremony of the Elizabeth City State University Army ROTC Program. Today, we honor three cadets. <coughs> and celebrate their 40 years of Viking leaders. Since 1983, Elizabeth City State University Battalion has produced remarkable leaders, such as Brigadier General Richard Harrison, class of 1994, the first official, general, first official general officer to graduate from Elizabeth City State University. Colonel Corey Brumsey, class of 1994, Division Chief, Joint All Domain Command and Control, Doctor to Command and Control, Communication and Computer, and computer Cyber. Colonel Reginald Harrison, class of 1996, Chief of Staff, U.S. Army Cyber Center of Excellence. Colonel Caprisa Brown, Slade, class of 1997, Chief of Army Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Agency. This is indeed an outstanding and accomplished program. This morning, I want to recognize one very special Viking Battalion alumni, Captain Retired Timothy R. Rogers, 
class in 1983, who commissioned as a Signal Corps officer. I first met Captain Rogers at the first football game that I attended here at ECSU, and since then I have seen him present at every sporting event, always talking to cadets. Additionally, Captain Rogers is a member of the Hampton Roads chapter of the Rocks Incorporated, an organization that goes out of its way to support the Viking Battalion. He always has a smile on his face and words of encouragement to all. Captain Rogers, you are a shining example of a soldier for life, a proud Viking alumni, and we are grateful for all your support and mentorship that you selflessly give the cadets and cadre of the ECSU Viking Battalion. Thank you. Additionally, I want to honor a very important staff member, Ms. Joyce Shaw, assistant to the Dean of School of Humanities and Social Sciences, who has served the students of ECSU for the past 38 years. Ms. Shaw, your overwhelming support to the Viking Battalion has ensured that cadets have always had the resources they needed to transform to leaders of, tom of tomorrow. Thank you for all that you do for the cadre and cadets of the Viking Battalion. Today, today the Viking Battalion is pleased to pay, pay special tribute to Colonel Corey L. Brumsey, class of 1994, and his 29 years of dedicated service to our country and the United States Army. Officiating today's ceremony is Brigadier General Harrison, who joins us virtually. Colonel Corey L. Brumsey is a native of South Mills, North Carolina. He received a regular Army commission from Elizabeth City State University through the Reserve Officer Training Corps program in May 1994 as a distinguished military graduate with a Bachelor of Science degree in Industrial Technology. He has earned graduate level degrees from the National Defense University, Georgetown University, and the University of Oklahoma. Colonel Brumsey enlisted in the North Carolina National Guard 1988 as a combat medic and participated in the simultaneous membership program. As U.S. Army Signal Officer for 29 years, he served in a variety of command and staff positions during his tenure. He gained extensive joint and operational experience, including assignments from the Joint Staff, Army Staff, Defense Information Systems Agency, and various Army major commands. He has been assigned to various locations within and outside the continental United States and has received numerous awards and accolades throughout his career. Colonel Brumsey is married to his college sweetheart, Shonde A. Brumsey, and has three sons, Corey Jr., Cale, and Enzo. Colonel Brumsey's full biography can be found on the fourth page of your program. Sadly, Colonel Brumsey's wife, Shonde, is un unable to join us today, but she joins us virtually. We recognize their three sons with us today, Corey Jr., Cale, and Enzo Brumsey, as well as his mother and father-in-law, Catherine and James Reed. Please know that in supporting Colonel Brumsey's career, you have supported us all in the defense of this nation and the care of our soldiers. Will everyone please join me in a round of applause for the family and their sacrifices in the defense of our nation. It is now my pleasure to introduce Brigadier General Richard A. Harrison as the officiant of today's ceremony. General Harrison is a native of Sunbury, North Carolina, and received his commission as an Air Defense Artillery Officer in 1994 from Elizabeth City State University, Army ROTC. General Harrison has served in a variety of command and staff positions within the continental United States and abroad. Notably, his previous assignment was as a 44th Commandant of the United States Army Air Defense Artillery School. He has received numerous awards and accolades throughout his career and holds degrees from Elizabeth City State University, Georgetown University, and the United States Army War College. He's married to the former Tyra Jones, and they have three children. His full biography can be found on the fifth page of your program. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to the screen for remarks from General Harrison. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Outstanding. Hey, uh, can you do me a huge favor to make a better experience for myself and for the folks in the audience? Can you please turn on the camera for 
the person logged in as uh, W18BravoBravo, please. This, if you only knew the the uh, the rank that's been tied to bringing this together, we've got lieutenant colonels, we've got majors, we've got captains, we have the army's true horsepower pulled together to make this uh, retirement ceremony happen virtually. And I want to thank them publicly for for doing that. So uh, a bit unorthodox. I'd love to be there in person. Uh, fortunately, our daughter graduates from UT Austin here today, and I can make it there in person. So I do apologize, but I wanted. Uh, to not miss this great ceremony for one of our great alumni and my good friend, uh, Colonel Brumsey. So really starting out, uh, good morning, Dr. Dixon, uh, Vice Chancellors and faculty of ECSU, uh, fellow general officers, other distinguished guests, family and friends of Corey and Sean Day, both in attendance and dialed in virtually like me. And last but certainly not least, a special thanks to Corey Brumsey and his three sons, CJ, Kale, and Enzo. Thank you guys for being there in attendance. I'd like to have, extend a special good morning and our prayers for a speedy recovery to Corey's wife, Shande, and his mom, Miss Lizzie, uh, who could not be there in person to join us physically, but I know they're watching through broadcast. Uh, we know their hearts are filled with joy and pride for Corey, like many of us, and they are very proud of his tremendous service to our nation. Please join me a round of applause in honor of Corey and his beautiful family. Thank you. And a special thanks to the AV team from ECSU and the AV team from UT Austin and the ROTC program from UT Austin for bringing this all together. Uh, we appreciate it. I know this was not easy and it's very difficult, but thank you for working through that. And a special thanks to all the folks that came together to bring this ceremony uh, to bear today. Please join a round of applause to recognize all the support folks behind the scenes that helped to make today possible. Thank you. I'd be remiss if I didn't take a moment to acknowledge the late Master Sergeant Retired Larry Gibson, who was a primary enlisted instructor for Corey and I while we attended ROTC at ECSU. We both agree that our military and our personal success uh, is a testament to his phenomenal leadership and training of us. We know right now he's in heaven looking down saying, those are my boys and I trained them well. So please join a round of applause for the late Master Sergeant Retired Larry Gibson. Thank you. Now, now, Corey, I'm truly honored that you asked me to do your retirement ceremony. You could have selected a number of distinguished general officers that you've worked for in your past, but you chose me, and it truly humbles me and Tyra uh, to, that you would think of us, and we really wish we could be there in person, but I'm truly honored uh, that you chose uh, chose me for today. Uh, so, folks, sit back, relax, and hang in there. I'll get you out of here in about two hours. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm aware that Cadets Felton, Moore, and Smith and their family and friends are waiting for these two old soldiers to pass the baton on to them so they can begin their Army career. So just please allow me just to be the first to congratulate you three cadets, you three gentlemen, as you join the Army team today. I have the confidence, uh, utmost confidence in you, and Corey and I are so proud that you are coming behind us and we can pass the baton to you. It's hard to imagine that 29 years ago, Colonel Brumsy and I sat where you're sitting right now today, you know, with our future ahead of us, and we had no idea what we we're going to do. But look at us now. You know, we both achieved tremendous uh, accomplishments in the Army, and you have that to stand on and look forward to. So I could not be more proud of you, and I wish you all the best of luck in your military career. And know that we're always here for you. We're going to be there throughout your entire career, and we'll mentor and guide you because at some point, uh, one of you or all of you are going to have to replace the Colonel Brumsey and I, and we're certainly proud uh, to have you join the Army team and a part of the Viking Battalion. Okay, in preparation for Corey's uh, retirement ceremony, I felt it was prudent that I do some research. Uh, Corey came a long way from South Mills. Uh, now, if you don't know, South Mills is a very small town, like my small town in North Carolina, and uh, a lot of folks, uh, you know, pick jobs right within the town or shortly or very nearby, but Corey and I chose to join the Army, and this young man really came a long way from South Mills, and that's the theme I'm going to use today, a long way from South Mills. 
In fact, a real quick joke. Corey was so fond of South Mills. When we were in college, Corey made a song, a rap song about South Mills. It went something like this. South Mills, South, South Mills, South Mills, South, South Mills. So uh, those folks in the audience who are South Mill, uh, uh, South Mill uh, residents know that Corey is very proud of you. And uh, unfortunately, his rap song did not get produced. But it, indeed, it was a great rap song about his hometown, South Mills. Now, Corey was born in 1791. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. He was born in 1971. I just know he's an old guy and he has less hair than I do. And uh, judging by his bald head, then uh, he's definitely, I think Corey had an Afro in college, uh, but through his 29 years of service, somehow uh, he wore his hair off. Uh, but he is certainly a great South Mill veteran and uh, we're so proud of him. I wanna invite you to travel back with me in time today. Uh, in 1971, Miss Lizzie gave birth to Corey. In 1971, the number one song was Let's Stay Together by Al Green. Now, I'm not going to sing the song like President Obama did on stage, but I want to share a few words of that great song uh, with you to kind of help you understand this young man, Corey Brumsey, in 1971, what kind of shaped him. Uh, now, when you listen to the words of that song, some of the words of that song are like, whether times are good or bad, happy or sad, let's stay together. Now, I'm sure in 29 years, Corey had some good times, he had some bad times, he had some happy times, he had some sad times, but he, the Army, Shonday, and the boys, they all stayed together. A few more fun facts about 1971. Gas was 33 cents per gallon in 1971. A loaf of bread was 70 cents in 1971, and a dozen of eggs was 60 cents in 1971. Man, I'd give almost anything for those prices today, especially when the carton of eggs cost about five bucks now, and Gases are out 350 in most places. So 71 clearly was a, was a great year. Now travel with me in time, fast forward to 1994. Corey and I were commissioned in May of 1994. Gas prices were $1.11. Not better than today, but not as good as 71. Uh, a loaf of bread was between 69 cent and 99 cent. A little bit better than you know today, but not as good as 71. But most popular black male hairstyles back in 1994 was a flat top and high top fade. And uh, also the afro. And I think Corey had all three of those uh, haircuts during 1994 graduation and, and commissioning. But if I remember correctly, I think Corey and Shande's boys, CJ and Kale, I think they both have afros. And it's clear that they got their hair from their mom. Just look at their dead bald head now. So. I am so happy that these young men sport their mom's afro and not their dad's uh, bald head. Being mindful of the time today, uh, I'm gonna really make a point of the high points of Corey's career. Now, I don't wanna spend the time to buy, the never just read Corey's bio, so I'm gonna skip through some of those things, but I wanna spend some time focusing on those high points that he and I discussed over the phone that were in his career that were very memorable. Uh, so I'm gonna fast forward through his time continuing here in his career. Now, Corey spent a third of his time on active duty in overseas assignment. Uh, Corey spent one year in Korea. He spent nine years in Germany, two years in Iraq, and one year in Kuwait. Uh, he and Sade have moved a total of 19 times in 29 years. For those in the audience who are non-military affiliated, that means that he probably has 19 sets of curtains and 19 rugs that don't fit in the same house because in our spouses, they have to buy new curtains and new rugs for every single house that we've moved in. So I'm sure there's boxes of curtains and boxes of rugs somewhere in his basement uh, because I have that in mind. So, uh, and moving on to uh, Corey's time at Fort Bragg. In 1999, uh, Corey and Sean Day tied the knot and uh, they began their armored career together and their journey together. Uh, they met at ECSU, just like my wife Tyra and I. Uh, we met there in Johnson Hall back in, uh, back in 1991. And uh, they're another example of the Viking love uh, that, uh, that's found there on that big, great campus. Uh, and folks that you, if you meet the right person there, you tie the knot and you have about 29 years or so or even greater to spend your life together. So both of us found two Viking alumni to marry and we've, we've uh, made the tremendous choice to do that. Uh, just three days before terrorists attacked our nation on September the 11th, Shonda gave birth to Corey Jr., AKA CJ in Kitzigan, Germany. While Corey was in, company command of Bravo Company 17th Signal Battalion. Now keep that fact in mind because Corey somehow with all the things that go on where we're in command, Corey decides to have kids when he's in command. 
So just remember that later on, we'll come back to that. So uh, he found some time in command uh, to have kids, but we're certainly honored and happy to have CJ here. And he's been an amazing young man throughout his entire life. In 2003, uh, this was a very significant year for both Corey and I. Uh, we were both selected for the same fellowship. We were both selected for the Army's, Army's highly competitive Office of the Secretary of Defense, Joint Staff and Army Staff Intern Program. Now this marks the first time that we would serve together since our days back in ROTC program. The internship program afforded us an opportunity to receive a master's degree from Georgetown University, followed by two years in the Pentagon. Now this was a momentous occasion for the university in that two of the five officers commissioned in 1994, that's 40% for those of you who do math in public, uh, that established when they went to the intern program. So really, I think the class of 1994 is probably the best class to graduate and commission from Lisbon City State. I self-proclaim that. Now, shortly after competing uh, for this assignment here and serving in the Pentagon, uh, Corey and Shande gave birth to their second son, Kale, in 2004. Very difficult time in the Pentagon, but Corey and Shande found time to expand their family. So again, when he's busy, he can multitask and he can grow his family. Now, while serving overseas, Corey had a unique opportunity to meet former President Barack Obama. He met uh, the late General Retired Colin Powell. He met the former Secretary of State, Dr. Condoleezza Rice, and several other government officials through his duties there uh, in Germany. Now, Corey shared with me his proudest moment was in his career when he got promoted to Colonel right there at ECSU in 2016. Now, shortly after that, he and I were deployed together in Southwest Asia and in Kuwait. And that was our second time that we had a chance to serve together since we were cadets there at uh, ECSU. The next milestone I want to talk about is the birth of Corey's and Shande's son, Enzo, while Corey was in brigade command. Yeah, that's right. Corey was a seasoned brigade commander at the young age of 48 years old with a newborn. Can you imagine that? Again, he finds time somehow in command positions to grow his family, but we are certainly honored to have Enzo as part of the, uh, the Brumsey family. Now, in 2021, Corey began his third and final assignment to the Pentagon as part of the Joint All-Domain Command and Control Cross-Functional Team. In this job, Corey was focused on developing and implementing a strategy to increase the decision advantage to commanders and staff through the lens of people, processes, and technology. Now, Corey, you've had an amazing career, but more importantly, you've been an outstanding father and an amazing husband. I know your family adores you, and now that you have much more time to spend with them and give them your attention, trust me, they're going to use that. I want to thank you publicly on behalf of a grateful nation for all that you've done in your faithful and honorable service. As you transition to a soldier for life roles, I want to be confident that the Vikings that come behind you and I are ready to stand watch. You are Today, you are officially moved on to the soldier for life roles. And I truly am humbled that you asked me to be a part of your ceremony. And my friend, you've come a long way from South Mills. Today, I salute you, my friend, my comrade, and my brother, my fraternity brother. First of all, servants of all, we shall transcend all. People first, winning matters, Viking pride, Viking pride, Viking pride. Thank you. Thank you, General Harrison, for your words and friendship to Colonel Brumsey and to the Viking Battalion. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the reading of the award citation. To all, attention to orders. To all who shall see these presents, greetings. This is to certify that the Secretary of Defense has awarded the Defense Superior Service Medal to Colonel Corey L. Brumsey, Division Chief, Joint All Domain Command and Control, Director at for Command, Control, Communications, and Computer Cyber, J6 of the Joint Staff. During his period as the Division Chief, Colonel Brumsey's outstanding leadership and devotion were instrumental factors in the Department of Defense's efforts for joint all-domain command and control, a top priority for the Secretary of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, leveraging forces from all command and control, all services, combatant commands, agencies, and mission partners to enable command and control on the battlefield. Colonel Brumsey's efforts helped advance the mission of joint all domain command and control by overseeing implementation of the department's strategy to rapidly develop and deliver 
integrated capabilities to the joint warfighter. His leadership resulted in numerous high-level strategic engagements, delivery of key artifacts, including the joint all-domain command and control, impl implementation and campaign plans, and the identification of joint all-domain command and control core enabling capabilities. Colonel Brumsey's tireless and persistent coordination with the joint staff and service leadership fostered strong working relationships across the Department of Defense and with allies and coalition partners. His efforts ensured integration of joint strategic and operational guidance into ongoing department efforts to develop joint all-domain command and control capabilities for the United States forces and partner nations. The distinctive accomplishments of Colonel Brumsey culminate a distinguished career in the service of his country and reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Army, and the Department of Defense. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand, remain standing for the retirement orders. Attention to orders. Special order dated 11th April 2023, effective 30th of June 2023. Colonel Corey L. Brumsey is relieved from active duty and is retired effective 1st July 2023 per Army Regulation 140-14 in the grade of Colonel by order of the Secretary of the Army. Please be seated. Major Kendrick will now uh, present the Certificate of Retirement the Certificate of Appreciation from the Commander-in-Chief. The certificate reads, I extend my personal gratitude and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation to you for your patriotic service to our country. Your bravery and dedication to our armed forces helped protect your fellow Americans during a critical moment in our history and contributed to a world of greater security and growing prosperity. Your devotion to duty honor and country in keeping with the long traditions of the finest military in the world embodied the American ideal of selfless service. Our nation owes you an incredible debt. Your commitment and the example you set will inspire future generations to serve with pride and to keep our country secure. You represent the best of our nation and I join our fellow Americans in saluting your honorable service and wish you happiness and success in your next chapter. Signed, J. R. Biden, Commander in Chief. At this time, Major Kendrick will present a certificate of appreciation from the Department of the Army. The certificate reads, thank you to you and your family for many years of dedicated service and commitment to our nation. Only 17% of all soldiers who joined the Army preserve until retirement. Please accept our congratulations for reaching this personal milestone. As you transition to the next chapter of your life, you will represent the Army in your community and may be the only connection to the military many people ever have. Our challenge to you is hire and inspire. Hire veterans if you can, and refer them to positions you know about. Inspire those with whom you interact to serve or support those that do. Most of all, tell your Army story. What led you to serve and the, most, and the positive impact the Army had on you. In this box, we present you with the United States flag, a soldier for life lapel button, and soldier for life decals. These items are symbols of your commitment to the Army and our nation. Display them proudly around your home, on your vehicle, and in your community as a way to continue to support the Army and its people, our soldiers, families, civilians, and our soldiers for life. Once a soldier, always a soldier, a soldier for life. Signed, Christine E. Wormworth, Secretary of the Army, James C. McConville, General, United States Army Chief of Staff, and Michael A. Grinston, Sergeant Major of the Army. At this time, Major Kendrick will present a certificate of appreciation from the Joint Staff. The certificate reads, a grateful nation recognizes that Corey L. Brumsey, having served faithfully and honorably, was retired from the armed forces of the United States on the first day of July, 2023. Signed, Mary F. O'Brien, Lieutenant General, United States Air Force, Director of the Joint Six. Will Ms. Catherine Reed, on behalf of Mrs. Brumsey, Corey Jr., Kale, and Enzo now join us on stage.
Major Kendrick will now present a certificate of appreciation from the Chief of Staff of the Army to Ms. Reed on behalf of Mrs. Shonde Brumsey. The certificate reads, to all who shall see these presents, greeting. This is to certify that Mrs. Shonde A. Brumsey, on the occasion of the retirement of your spouse from the United States Army, has earned grateful appreciation for your own unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and understanding helped to make possible your spouse's lasting con contribution to the nation. Signed, James C. McConville, General, United States Army, Chief of Staff. Major Kendrick now presents a certificate of appreciation from the Joint Staff to Ms. Reed on behalf of Mrs. Shonde Brumsey. The certificate reads, a grateful nation recognizes that Mrs. Shonde A. Brumsey, on the occasion of her husband's retirement from the armed forces of the United States, has earned our country's appreciation for her unfailing support and understanding that helped make possible her husband's lasting contribution to the nation. Signed, Mary O'Brien, Lieutenant General, United States Air Force, Director of the Joint Six. At this time, Major Kendrick will present a certificate of appreciation from the Joint Staff to Corey Jr., Kale, and Enzo Brumsey. Their certificate reads, a grateful nation recognizes that on the occasion of his father's retirement from the armed forces of the United States, has earned our country's appreciation for his unfailing support and understanding that helped make possible his father's lasting contribution to the nation. Signed, Mary O'Brien, Lieutenant General, United States Air Force, Director of the Joint Six. Ladies and gentlemen, please give him a round of applause for the family of Colonel Brumsey. You may now take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I present to you Colonel Retired Corey L. Brumsey. Can everybody hear me? Okay, hey. Uh, Wow. <laughs> hey, um, I'm, I'm going to keep this brief. Uh, just uh, a few folks uh, I would like to thank uh, that has helped me uh, along the way. So, uh, um, and, and then we're going to go and move into something much more important. The reason, the real reason why we're here today is the commissioning of these cadets. Okay. Uh, but uh, first of all, I want to say, uh, I want to thank the Lord. Uh, you know, without him, I definitely wouldn't have been here. Okay. Uh, 29 years is a long time, and, and made all 29 years safely, you know, and, and together with my family, kept my family together, so all, all honor to the Lord. Uh, Chancellor, I want to thank you. Uh, she has done amazing things for the university uh, in the last couple of years in such amount of short time. Uh, is, it makes me proud. I am definitely Viking proud and, and appreciate everything you have done for this university. Okay, uh, General Harrison, uh, not sure if he's still on or not, but uh, <laughs> I, I really want to thank, uh, and, and I just can't call him Rich. Well, I guess I could call him Rich now, but, but General Harrison, and, and, and he definitely, uh, he definitely, if you don't mind, I want to walk down here. Uh, he, he definitely uh, uh, deserves the respect uh, that he has, uh, he's gained and earned. He, he worked for that, that, that star. He really worked for that star, and he deserves it. So uh, General Harrison and I, like I said, you know, we go way back. We were, we were friends. We were, we were serving together as cadets. You know, we were doing PT tests and all that good stuff. So, uh, and, and he's from Sunbury. So, you know, right down the street, well, off of 158, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so, so we're homeboys. But, again, uh, I really appreciate everything uh, Rich has done. I mean, he... You know, when we had discussions about this years ago, um, you know, going back to Elizabeth City, you know, and, and having like our promotions and, and, and things of that nature, you know, I was like, hey, Rich, you know, well, at the time, Rich, you know, if when I retire, you know, I would love for you to officiate my ceremony because I know you're going to make general officer. And, and he agreed. 
And, and as you know, I mean, as you plan, we planned this thing years ago. <laughs> you know, his daughter, which is a good thing, is graduating this weekend. Okay? But he still found a way to be able to host the ceremony. And, and I really appreciate it. So, General Harrison, thank you for that. I uh, want to thank the, uh, the Viking Battalion ROTC cadre for putting on this phenomenal event. Thank you so much, and I really pre appreciate it. A, this right here is pretty hard, okay? Trying to do something virtually is pretty hard. You know, getting people together in one place is pretty hard. And, 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 and they did it without a hitch. So I really appreciate all the work you and your cadre has done. Thank you. So um, yeah, I, I want to thank all my mentors you know, throughout my career, the, the NCOs, uh, the soldiers uh, that have helped me be a su you know, successful along the way. Uh, you, you don't become, su become successful by yourself. It, it, it takes a team of people to become successful. And, and um, along the path, you know, from the time I was a lieutenant up until now, I had had great NCO, non-commissioned officers, you know, that guided me and provided mentorship and wisdom uh, to help me avoid those pitfalls that we normally run into. So without them, I would not be in this place where I am today. Uh, my peers, you know, the, the other lieutenants, the captains, the majors, the colonels, you know, my battle buddies, you know, we're, we're, we're basically serving as a support team, a support structure for each other. You know, when times are getting rough, you know, we have somebody we can talk to you know, openly and candidly, you know, so uh, again, when you, like right now, this team right here and then this team right here, you know, you're going to rely on each other, you know, you're going to rely on those other lieutenants, you know, when, when, once you get your commission, you're going to rely on those uh, other uh, your lieutenants and your peers, so uh, it, it'll help you get through, through those days when it gets hard. My family, I have tons of family. I can go on and on and on, so, but I'm gonna try to keep it brief. But you know, to my, my brothers and my, my sisters, my, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, you know, everyone that knew me before I was Lieutenant Brumsey or before I was Colonel Brumsey, you know, the ones that really guided me and instilled those, those values in me uh, as I was growing up. Um, really appreciate everything that you have done and, and I love you all. Uh, my mother and father-in-law, yeah. thank you for allowing me to, to marry your, your, your beautiful daughter. <laughs> and uh, give me a second here. Yeah. Thank you for uh, allowing me to, to marry your, your beautiful daughter, which uh, you know, I met here at Elizabeth City State. So uh, it, it took some time, you know, um, I wasn't the, the sharpest tack in the box, but uh, it, 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 it took some time, <laughs> a, couple, a couple of years, but uh, uh, I really appreciate everything, you know, you both have done in support of, of my family, you know, being that the perfect grandparents and, and just taking me in and, and love me as if I'm your son. So thank you so much, Ma. I appreciate it. Pop, got something for you. So, uh, you know, definitely the, uh, I think one of the most, uh, uh, you know, back up a little bit. So, unfortunately, uh, my mother, she, she couldn't be here today. Uh, she's she's, she's uh, uh, dealing with a, a, an illness, so she's in the hospital. Uh, but, you know, good thing this is going to be recorded, and so we can show it to her later. But, uh, you know, my mom, she's... She's the one that really instilled those values and kept us, you know, all, I mean, I have seven siblings. So, and so you know, it, that takes a, a very strong person to be able to, to manage all of that. So I, I learned a lot of things from her instinctively, you know, just because of what she went through. So again, unfortunately, she couldn't be here today, but, uh, you know, mom, I love you, and I'll see you in a little while. The, uh, the next, my, Crowning achievement, I believe, are my sons. 
Where, where's Uzo? Oh, okay, he's in the back. All right. <laughs> uh, but my, my sons, you know, I, I love you guys. You know, you, we've moved so many times and, and every, you know, I, at least 10, 12 times with the boys, okay? And, and um, never any complaints at all. You know, they, you know, it's like we're hitting every a year and a half, year, two years, it's time to move again, you know. When I went to, uh, when I was growing up, you know, I started in Grandy Primary in 1976, yeah, and graduated from Camden High in 1989, same school system, you know, so basically had the same friends from kindergarten up till the time I graduated from high school, and then some of them went to college with me, you know, but, you know, these guys didn't experience that. They had, you know, meeting new friends every couple of years, you know, so again, I thank you so much personally for making my job easier you know, by being so supportive, and, uh, and I love you guys. So, and you, and you might have to read the uh, card for uh, Enzo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and, uh, and, and, and lastly, um, you know, my, you know, my, uh, uh, my wife, she couldn't be here either. She's, she's dealing with an illness as well, and she's in the hospital. I know she's watching, uh, but... Um, uh, again, for the last, I guess, 24 in February, it'll be 25 years, you know, we've been on this trip together. So it's definitely been a, a partnership, you know, and she's invested in and, and uh, with her, you know, with uh, taking care of the family when I deploy, you know, going to these different TD, uh, temporary duties and things of that nature, making sure that the home front was going well and being taken care of. And I didn't have to worry about that. So um, I really appreciate everything that my wife has done. Sean, I love you. And, and again, that, uh, <laughs> that trip to Australia, uh, I guess I owe it to you. And, and uh, we, we're going uh, to do that here one day. But uh, again, I uh, uh, appreciate you know, everything that she has done. So, so again, uh, like I said, I was going to keep these remarks brief. But I, again, I really want to thank everyone for being here today. Uh, uh, you know, this is a really special uh, moment for me in my career. This is a new chapter uh, that I'm about to turn into and, and uh, looking forward. So thank you again, Elizabeth City. I love you. And uh, Viking Pride. Congratulations, Colonel Brumsey. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the retirement of Colonel Brumsey. As we transition to the commissioning of the class of 2023, please turn your attention to the screen as we showcase the efforts of the Viking Battalion this past year. Staking up on my movement, losing is not an option. I can come to comprehend this, that honor and respect every lesson.
Pride. Viking Pride. All right. Good morning again. I hope you're enjoying yourself so far. What you have just witnessed was the closure of one chapter, a chapter that focused on the past. Now we're about to begin a new chapter and focus on something much more important, our future. Also, I am pretty sure that you're thinking that, hey, didn't that guy just retire? <laughs> yeah, even though I am now retired, I will still continue, continue to serve our nation, our army, our university, and our mighty Viking battalion. As an alumnus of Elizabeth City State University, and especially a former cadet of this battalion, it is a tremendous honor for me to be part of your commissioning ceremony. Cadet Jang, thank you for the invocation and the blessing upon these cadets and the families today. Cadet Teagle, thank you for the cadet creed. Those words still have meaning and resonate with me to this very day. <laughs> to the cadets, what an exciting time and what a very proud moment for each of you the ROTC cadre, and especially for your families. So today is a landmark day in the history of the program. The cadets before you hail from locations throughout the United States, ranging from Hempstead, Texas. Where is Hempstead? Anybody from Hempstead? All right, from Hempstead, from Morgantown, North Carolina. Morganton, North Carolina. Where, where's Morganton? All right, and all right, and lastly, right here from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. All right. <laughs> Regardless of where they came from, their road and life led them here to Elizabeth City State in the University as individuals. However, today they will depart as a team. They'll soon be joining the most powerful army the world has ever known and serving on army bases from Fort Lee, Virginia to Fort Carson, Colorado and to Fort Huachuca, Arizona. They will join various branches within the army including the quartermaster, the military intelligence, the military police, all critical areas of expertise required in our army. I know the cadets are excited and proud you will receive your commissions today and your diplomas tomorrow, and then it's off to the next exciting chapter in your lives and professions. I know the families here are proud of their achievements of their sons, their spouses, and their siblings. I also know that the only thing that's standing between these future officers and the Army commissions is me. So I will keep my remarks brief. But before I go any further, I want to thank some very important folks in attendance this morning. Again, I want to thank Chancellor D J Dixon for being here. Okay. I want to thank uh, Major Kendrick and the battalion's committed hard-charging ROTC cadre. We have placed the future of our Army in your hands. And because of you, our armored future is bright. I also want to recognize all of the current and former service members of the Viking Battalion and Elizabeth City State alumni. Thank you for joining us this morning to observe and take part in this important ceremony. Once more, I want to especially recognize Captain Retired Timothy Rogers. Ooh. Again, he was one of the original commissionees 40 short but very important years ago. Please join me in a round of applause. And, and thank you, sir, again, for being part of this ceremony. All right. Also, I would like to take a moment to thank the moms and dads, the grandparents, the spouses, children, and families of our cadets. Thank you for raising and supporting such wonderful, upstanding young men. Thank you for instilling and placing them the kind of values that our Army needs and its leaders. 
Thank you for allowing and encouraging them to serve in the armed forces of our nation. Will you please stand so we can all recognize you? Family members, will you please stand? Absolutely. Thank you. Again, thank you. Thank you so much for all of your support. Now for our cadets, I want to thank you. Thank you for your willingness to serve our army and our nation during this critical time in history. 2023 is a very special year. 75 years ago in 1948, President Truman issued an executive order to desegregate the armed forces. Also in 1948 was the Women's Armed Services Integration Act to allow women to serve as permanent members of the armed forces. Fast forward to 1973. 50 years ago, the last US service member departed Vietnam. In the same year was the end of the draft and the beginning of the all volunteer service. Then, as many of us are familiar, 20 years ago was the beginning of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Then, almost exactly in the middle of this period of time, our ROC, ROTC program commissioned its first cadets 40 years ago. Since then, ECSU ROTC program has continued its legacy of excellence. The group of cadets sitting in front of us is part of a long and distinguished legacy here at Elizabeth City State. Since the establishment of the ROTC program at ECSU in 1983, over 200 officers have earned their commissions through the Viking Battalion, with one even achieving the rank of general officer, which we're fortunate enough to see today. Now, this number may pale in comparison against other universities, and you know that's fine. Remember, it's about quality and not necessarily quantity. Today, three more cadets joined that long line of service to our nation. All of the cadets come from military families and know firsthand the rewards and challenges of military life. One cadet's wife is retired from the US Air Force with siblings currently serving in various branches. Another cadet's father is retired from the Army. And we also have a cadet whose sister is currently serving. So if there's any generation in our nation's history and if there's any class of cadets in this battalion's history who truly knows what it means to serve in uniform and who knows about sacrifice it requires, it's all of you. It's your generation, it is your class. And yet you volunteered to serve anyway, which makes you part of a very select group of Americans. The less than 1% of Americans who serve in uniform of our armed forces and that include all services, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and now Space Force, active duty, National Guard, reserves, less than 1%. And in a few moments, you will all be officers in that elite group. Today, you will accept the responsibility to serve as an officer in the United States Army. And if you are experiencing a little anxiety about now, you're not alone. Take it from me, I was in the exact same spot 29 years ago. So I know what you're feeling. I also know and I can tell you that you're gonna be okay. Shortly, each of you will take the oath of office and be commissioned as a second lieutenant. However, I challenge each of you to strive to become more than just a lieutenant. I want you to become a good officer and an effective leader and proudly represent the legacy of this university and this great ROTC battalion. Any lieutenant can put on a uniform and head off to the unit with little preparation. But a good officer and leader will prepare themselves by learning their craft, their soldiers, and their mission so that they can lead and develop soldiers while executing the missions to standard. Leading and caring for our soldiers is the business of our army. It is a very serious business, and today it becomes your business. It is also something you can't fake, 
your soldiers will know very quickly if you are not genuine and a trustworthy leader. Today, you can see in Europe and other parts of the world where our army is serving. Lieutenants are charged with making some of the toughest decisions imaginable and entrusted with the very lives of the soldiers that they lead. So you might ask, what does it take to be a, a good lead officer and an effective leader in today's army? Well, I will offer you a few of my thoughts about success. I will share with you some of the tools that you can take with you that I learned along the way. First, work hard to know and understand your job so that you are the expert. Many soldiers you will lead are very experienced. You must also know your job and be totally competent in every detail of your duties. Listen to your non-commissioned officers and learn from their experiences. But do your own homework and understand the Army standards. Second, become known as a committed professional of character and demonstrate it in your daily conduct on and off duty. Give 100% every day and perform every task and mission to the very best of your ability. Use your knowledge, good judgment, instinct, and initiative in developing a positive attitude towards our Army and its soldiers and toward what you will do personally to make the Army better. This will become the foundation of your professional reputation and for which you will become known for throughout your career. And over time, your reputation will precede you, good or bad, especially in this digital age. Third, adhere to and enforce high standards, discipline, and accountability in everything that you do. No matter where you serve, you are in front of people and must maintain good order and discipline that define our Army profession and support our Army values. High standards, discipline, and accountability are the cornerstones of successful officers, leaders, and units. My final point is to make sure that you use us. Use the officers that have received their commissions through this program. There are 60 officers, it was 61, now 60, from ECSU that are currently serving. Use us to help navigate through this maze. Always remember that you are not alone. Also, come back to ECSU and, and speak with the cadets. Give them your perspectives and what and what to look forward to as they become the future. You will become ambassadors for our universities and for the Viking Battalion. Last but not least, make a difference. Fortunately for all of you, your time with the Viking Battalion has prepared you to do so. And I know this firsthand because this ROTC program certainly prepared me for my career. Becoming a successful officer in our Army isn't going to be easy. There will be challenges and obstacles along the way. However, if you use my thoughts as a guide, if you do these things, there's a good chance of reaching success and you'll earn the respect of the soldiers that you will lead, the peers serving beside you, the commanders who will place their trust and confidence in your abilities and of the American people who will look to you for their de defense and uphold the values of our Army and our nation. In 2023, I couldn't be more proud to be here with you as I look forward to passing on the torch as a fellow soldier in today's greatest Army. To all of you today, congratulations, good luck, Godspeed, and be all you can be. Viking pride, Viking pride, Viking pride. Thank you, Colonel Brumsey.
for joining us today to share your wisdom and experience with us. On behalf of the Viking Battalion and Commissioning Class of 2023, we would like to present this gift in appreciation for your words. We wish you and your family happiness and peace in the next chapter of your lives. The commissioning ceremony you'll see today is a time-honored tradition that signifies a new officer joining the profession of arms and serves as a visible transformation from cadet to officer. A commissioned officer must administer the oath of office to the new lieutenant and swear them to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The pinning of second lieutenant is a visible sign of the appointment and of the commitment made by the officer. The first salute is a tradition in our Army whereby a newly commissioned off second lieutenant presents a silver dollar to the first soldier who salutes him or her. It is said that you must buy your first salute and then earn every salute thereafter through your performance and by gaining the respect of your subordinates. The oath of office will now be administered to the spring class of 2023, followed by the pinning of their gold bars and first salute. Cadet Derek Felton commissions to the United States Regular Army as a quartermaster officer. His first assignment will be to Fort Stewart, Georgia with the 3rd Infantry Division. The oath of office will be administered to Cadet Felton by Captain Austin M. Neal, Armor, United States Army. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name. I, Derek Felton, Jr. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties of the office. Discharge the duties of the office. On which I am about to enter. On which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Second Lieutenant Felton will now be pinned by his mother and father, Mary and Derek Felton Sr. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Felton's first salute will be rendered by his sister, Staff Sergeant Joetta Hunter, United States Army. Cadet DeMarcus Moore commissions to the United States Regular Army as a military police officer. His first assignment will be to Fort Polk, Louisiana, with the 519th Military Police Battalion. 
The oath of office will be administered to Cadet Moore by Colonel Johari Hemphill, United States Air Force. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name. I, Demarcus Lee Moore. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will well and faithfully. Pardon me. And that I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Our purpose of evasion. Our purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. That I will and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office. Of the office. On which I'm about to enter. Of which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Second Lieutenant Moore will now be pinned by his mother, Joe Hemphill, and his father, Sergeant First Class Retired Adam Moore, United States Army. Second Lieutenant Moore's first salute will be rendered by his father, Sergeant First Class Retired Adam Moore, United States Army. Cadet Xavier Smith commissions to the United States Regular Army as a military intelligence officer. His first assignment will be to Fort Huachuca, Arizona. The oath of office will be administered to Cadet Smith by his nephew, First Lieutenant Christian Jackson, Surveillance Control Officer, United States Space Force. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, uh, Xavier Smith. Having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Army. Having been appointed a second lieutenant in the United States Army. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To support and defend the Constitution of the United States. To support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign or domestic. Against all enemies, foreign or domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation without or purpose of evasion. Without into any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And I will well and faithfully. That I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office upon which I'm about to enter. Of the office upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Second Lieutenant Smith will now be pinned by his wife, mother, sister, and daughter, Atreya Smith, Charlotte Smith Hansford, Alexandria Smith Hansford, and Brooklyn Smith.
Second Lieutenant Smith's first salute will be rendered by his brother, Sergeant First Class Charles Pedro Glover, United States Army. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the commissioning class of 2023. <laughs> you will now have congratu congratulatory remarks from Chancellor Kerry G. Dixon. This is such an exciting ceremony, celebration, and it's so good to see all of you. To Major Julie Kendrick, Colonel Corey Brumsey, retired. You like how that sounds, right, Colonel? <laughs> retired. All of our men and women currently in uniform, as well as those who have retired and the family and friends of Elizabeth City State University. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please stand to be recognized if you have served in any branch of armed forces. Thank you for your service. Today is a special occasion here at ECSU as we celebrate one of our Vikings who have returned home after 29 years of service to this great nation. Colonel Brumsey, I am honored to be one of the first to offer you my congratulations on your retirement. You embody ECSU's motto, come to discover, leave to conquer. We wish you the best as you start this new chapter in your life with your family. We look forward to hearing uh, from you, and I hear that you're going to be going fishing, is what I heard someone in the audience say. So we, we would love to hear about your retirement and everything that you will do um, in your leisure time. But I would also like to present to you a special token So last night, I had the privilege of hosting the inaugural Chancellor's Military Pre-Commissioning Reception. Did you all enjoy it? Yes, yes, yes. Good, good, good. It was a time of fellowship and reflection on the academic journey of these soon-to-be commissioned officers, Second Lieutenants Felton, Moore, and Smith. You entered ECSU to discover, and now you are going to conquer. In the words of General Colin Powell, excellence is not an exception, it is a prevailing attitude. With excellence as the standard and the tenacity of a Viking, you have demonstrated grit and resilience, which are characteristics required of an officer. Your determination has led to the significant accomplishment of earning your baccalaureate degree and commissioning as officers in the United States Army and Army Reserves. As you go forth to serve our nation and world, do it with the utmost integrity, courage, excellence, and Viking pride. 
and to all of our men and women in uniform and those who have retired. We are grateful for your service and thank you for your dedication to our great nation. Congratulations again to our new second lieutenants, Felton, Moore, and Smith. I will present to you a token so that you know wherever you go, the Vikings are always with you. And I'll do that at the graduation ceremony tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to giving that token to you that you will carry with you on your journey and always know you have a home right here with the Vikings and we are keeping you in our thoughts and prayers always. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chancellor Dixon, for your remarks and constant support for the Viking Battalion. We will now hear our closing remarks from Major Kendrick. First, I want to take a special moment to thank the families and friends of whom have been honored here today. These officers' desire to serve can be attributed to your influence and guidance. They are part of an army full of possibilities. Their core values were instilled in them long before they arrived at Elizabeth City State University. Without you, these officers would not be here today. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> to the faculty and staff of this great institution, you have, changed, you have been charged with administering the curriculum and educating and preparing these officers to be all they can be. Becoming both competent and innovative leaders, thank you for your time, knowledge and energy in preparing these future leaders for what lies ahead. We can't thank you enough. <clears throat> Lieutenants, when you leave here today, you'll begin your journey full of opportunities to become the best version of yourself. You now wear the gold bar of a second lieutenant, a bar that's symbolic. It is a figurative bar by which you and your actions will be judged. The bar has been set high by our army. You will be required to uphold the Army values, to demonstrate integrity and honor in all that you do, and, never, and, and, and to be above reproach. Those are the standards in which our Army and leaders are held, and Army of America's young men and women look forward to your leadership, to spark their passions, to build their communities, and to lead them to victory. As an Army leader, your advice, your guidance, and your voice will carry weight. Your mere presence will exert influence. Be certain to use influence for the greater good. Make your voice the catalyst that inspires others towards leadership excellence. Our nation's defense rests on the shoulders of competent leaders of character who are comfortable with complexity, who are capable of operating from the tactical to the strategic level. Army readiness depends on the quality of our all-volunteer force. I know that each of you are ready to meet the challenges that, that our, our changing world presents and to lead America's sons and daughters into the future. Congratulations on becoming a leader of our exceptional army. Best wishes throughout your career. Uphold the standard your goal bar represents. I look forward to the contributions that you will make to the United States military. Good luck as you begin this exciting chapter in your life. Make us proud and be all that you can be. Viking loud, Viking proud. Ladies and gentlemen, the Viking Battalion gives special thanks to Mrs. Melba Smith, Director of Television Siri, Series, Mr. Clarence Goss in the 1704 Media Productions, and Mr. Seth Lutton, our technician. Without their immense efforts, today's ceremony would not be possible. Now please rise for the benediction and playing of the Army Song. The words of the Army Song can be found on the back page of your program.
Please bow your heads in the manner of your faith as I pray in mine. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your blessings this day and these newly commissioned officers that stand before us. It is with great opportunity to join these officers in thanking you for their upcoming careers. We look forward to what this commissioning will do for them and what they will do for the United States Army. It is with heavy anticipation that we look forward to the ceremony that will begin the new chapters in the lives of these future Army officers. Thank you for this opportunity, Father, and in your name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. We thank you for joining us for the retirement of Colonel Retired Corey L. Brumsey and the commissioning of the class of 2023. The flags will remain on stage for photos with our alumni and newly commissioned officers. We also have cake, coffee, and light refreshments available in the foyer. We ask you to join us there in celebration. <laughs>